You hear the soft snick of the lock's tumblers falling into place. The leaded glass French doors swing silently open, and the rest of the party follows the tiefling rogue into the library. Moonlight streams in through the mullioned windows on the southern wall, rhyming the furniture and tall bookshelves in silver, making the polished mahogany gleam in the general gloom. I search for the stolen scroll. I check for traps. Check for secret doors. Okay, roll an investigation check. Obviously, a player making a low roll on an investigation or perception check is going to have an inkling that they've failed to succeed, and inevitably, they're going to feel like they've missed something. But if you can get your DM poker face down, and let's face it, that's the best kind of poker face, you might be able to help maintain some game immersion and satisfy that craving for discovery even when reacting to low dice rolls. Greetings, good humans, and welcome to Tabletop Alchemy, where sometimes we just talk about quick tips for new DMs, even if they're common knowledge and your host is beating a dead horse. No horses were harmed in the making of this video, at least not physically. <laughs> Metaphorically, that's another story. And where we also thank our patrons for hitting that tip jar, and we thank you, dear viewer, for viewing and commenting and all that fun stuff. You guys know I read and respond to all the comments, right? It's one of my favorite things to do. So let's talk about this one tabletop RPG game mechanic that's always bugged me just a little bit. Not the mechanic itself so much, but, but rather how using it sort of inevitably breaks immersion. I guess really all mechanics break immersion, so I guess that's not really what I'm getting at. This mechanic has a tendency to kind of break immersion in a protracted sense within a player's mind. The ubiquitous investigation check. And to some extent, the perception check. There are whole videos out there on the differences between the two and when to use one versus the other, etc. but we're not getting into that today. Mostly because I have trouble parsing that out myself sometimes. Anyway, the gameplay that typically leads to an investigation check, like whatever's happening just prior to the call for one, is usually an interesting or engaging bit of scene setting, at least for me. And a good chunk of RPG gameplay is all about discovery, right? For me, discovery is one of the coolest, if not the coolest, aspect of, well, not just games, but real life. Discovering things, unraveling mysteries, seeing what's on the other side of that mountain, or what's at the end of this tunnel, it's all about that intrinsic human drive to explore, to find something new, to discover something. And investigation checks are like little poppers of discovery potential. So your players are getting into a scene you've set, and then there's this call for a game mechanic that carries an implicit notion that the player may well miss discovering something cool based on the roll of a die. And that's fine, that's part of this type of storytelling. The unpredictable nature of the story created by the RNG of die rolls is one of the core features of TTRPGs, right? But investigation checks are fun to make because they're all about discovery. The thing that's always bothered me about these checks is how a player will know or feel they miss something when they miss a DC, or target number, for those of you not in a D&D. &D. It's a bit of an inescapable metagame type thing. There's just no real way to avoid it. And there's always that delineation of the successful role. Beat the DC, find the secret door. Fail the role, find nothing. So I've started using a technique for checks like these that is a, almost certainly not new at all, and B, might be something you already do, whether consciously or subconsciously. My goals with the technique are to A, hit that discovery dopamine generator as much as possible, even when a player fails the check, and B, sort of bondo over this hard break of success slash fail. Bondo is what they use to fill in and smooth over like dents in cars and stuff. Anyway, the technique is a very simple concept. You ready for it? Here it comes. Bulleted lists. Huh? Well... I call them ABLs, ascending bulleted lists. Does that make it sound more impressive? No? What are you, nuts? Who asked you anyway? Let's say your players enter a library in a gothic hotel looking for something or someone. They're on a quest and the last clue has led them here. You rattle off a brief atmospheric description of the chamber. Inevitably, someone's gonna ask something that calls for an investigation check. They roll an eight with their bonuses, it's a 12. I glance at my ABL and I know right away how many bullet points or details they're gonna get. Now let's say I had set 15 as the DC for finding the hidden bookcase door. So this player has technically failed a check, and now I proceed in a non-committal way with something like, all right, the first thing you notice is the decadently thick carpets on the floor. They appear to be very expensive imports. You also note a hint of candle smoke in the air. And so on. Here's what my list looks like for this particular scene. The carpets are thick, plush, and imported. There's a faint smell of candle smoke. One window is half open. The heavy desk is very neat and tidy, with stacks of organized paper, a writing quill, and ink pot placed just so, but the bowl of sand has been tipped over. One book in the darkest corner sticks out, as if it's about to fall off the shelf. And my little numbers there are target numbers, so a player gets all the details that fall below their dice roll result. 
everyone always notices something with their investigation check. It just depends on the strength of their role, how important or specific the details of what they notice are. I mean, maybe for a nat one, I would just explain that they've become preoccupied with that pesky bootlace that won't stay tied. Making ABLs like this serve a secondary purpose by helping me generate more details for specific locations or NPCs, and the more I know about a space or an NPC helps my ability to create a convincing setting and overall immersion. And often writing these details down can spur even more plot ideas or NPC attributes or backstory or, or whatever. Now one issue this brings up is prep. Like what about checks that occur in spaces I haven't either prepped or just have no reason to have extra detail pre-planned for? I mean, let's face it, in every session a DM is winging it more often than not. Just having this idea of tiered discovery gives me a general notion of how to proceed with my off-the-cuff improv. So while I'm never gonna come up with a whole list of things on the fly, I do have a mental framework to lean on. Just looking at a dice roll result will instantly let me know if I should give the player one, two, or three details, just as a rule of thumb. And doing that lets me delve more into the scene as well, because I immediately imagine myself in the space and just sort of describe what I imagine I see, or hear. I always try to keep in mind the notion of the five senses and will try to hit things that aren't just visual, like smell, sound, tactile surfaces, even taste if it's appropriate. Back to that DM poker face. If you get good at that poker face, after some time, your players will either barely feel like they're missing something on a roll higher than 10, or on the contrary, they'll just start constantly feeling like they're always missing something. And that can be just as rewarding for you as any other result, because you can mess with them all you want at that point. Of course, one thing you should definitely avoid is having any singular necessary clue or pivotal bit of information gated behind a, well, behind any DC or target number. If a piece of information is absolutely necessary for the completion of a quest or whatever, that info has to be made available somehow. Only put things that are not absolutely necessary behind a die roll. Anyway, I'd really love to hear how you guys run investigation checks, what tips or tricks do you use to make them engaging or fun or just not entirely binary metagamey results. And if you're a player and your DM has done some cool stuff with investigation checks, I'd love to hear about it. I truly am curious and always looking for new, awesome ideas on how to run the game better. So, make an ABL. See what it inspires. No, you don't have to call it that. See ya. And there's always that delineation of the successful role. Blah. And there's always that delineation of the successful role. So I can't say successful. That's why I'm not successful. And there's always that delineation of the successful.